Let's take a look at injuries to the A4 pulley. The A4 pulley is located on the volar aspect of the middle phalanx. It lies in the mid portion of the middle phalanx and is a thickening of the tendon sheath. Like the A2 pulley, it is a true fibro-osseous pulley. In fact, it has a direct attachment to the bone. Along with the other pulleys, it helps keep the tendons close to the bone during load. Let's take a look at a video which shows detail of the anatomy of the A4 pulley. Okay, so let's scan the A4 pulley. So the A4 pulley is uh, very similar to the A2 pulley. Um, it is just observe, observed on the uh, ultrasound scanner as I always say a smaller version of the uh, A2 pulley. So its location is sat in between the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint. Okay, so we put some uh, more gel over the area of the A4 and we will get scanning that. So when we are looking at the A4 pulley, what we are looking for is this area, as I said before, in between the proximal interphalangeal joint, which is this area on the screen here, and the distal interphalangeal joint, which is here. In terms of the other things that we can see, we can see the flexor tendons as they dive down here, and then they come back up, and then they come and attach um, here. Now, in terms of the anatomy of the A4, it is slightly different in the fact that um, one of the flexor tendons, the flex digitorum superficialis, actually comes and inserts and attaches into the uh, middle phalanx here, whereas the tendon that comes and attaches uh, to the um, distal phalanx is the flex digitorum profundus. So the area underneath the flexor tendons looks slightly different to the A2 pulley. Once again, with um, most people, it is difficult to observe the uh, A4 pulley similar to the A2 in this longitudinal plane. However, it is uh, very simple to see it in the transverse plane. So let's turn the transducer around. And here, and this is what I mean by it looks like a mini version of the A2. What we can see here is um, a cross section of the bone of the uh, middle phalanx. Flexor tendons in the middle here. Chris, if you can just wiggle your finger for me, you can see them slightly shifting there. And then what we can see over the top here is the uh, A4 um, pulley. What we can do then is we can just shift slightly proximal and slightly distal to kind of observe the pulley along its length. The presentation of an A4 pulley injury is very similar to the presentation of an A2 pulley injury with a big difference being the location of that injury. The A2 will be located at the proximal phalanx, whereas the A4 injury at the middle phalanx. For an A4 pulley injury, it will always be in a half crimp or full crimp position, as this puts the most load through the pulleys. Tears are often associated with a loud audible pop. And again, as with the A2 pulley, commonly occur during eccentric loads, for example, a foot slip. Swelling, pain, stiffness, and the ability to load the finger will vary regardless of the severity. Let's take a look at a normal ultrasound appearance of an A4 pulley. Okay, so on this image, we can see the proximal interphalangeal joint here. We can follow the middle phalanx down here, and we can see the distal interphalangeal joint here, and then we can see the bone of the distal phalanx and then here is the tip of the finger. Above the proximal interphalangeal joint, we will see the flexor tendons. The flexor tendons come down here, come up over the distal interphalangeal joint, and then the flexor digitorum profundus will come and attach onto the distal phalanx around about here. The flexor digitorum superficialis will come and attach onto the middle phalanx here. In terms of the location of the A4 pulley, as we said, it sits within the middle part of 
middle phalanx, roughly around here to here. And although we can't see the A4 pulley itself in this image, we know that there is no problem or injury because of how this flexor tendon acutely dives down towards the bone and then comes up towards the distal interphalangeal joint. Here we have a transverse image of the A4 pulley. I always like to think that this looks like a mini version of the A2 pulley. What we can see in this image is bone at the bottom. We can see the flexor tendons in the middle and then we can see the A4 pulley that sits across the top of the flexor tendons. And then here we can see the full outline of the finger itself. Okay, so let's look at a moving image of a normal A4 pulley on ultrasound. In this video, we can see the proximal interphalangeal joint here. We can see the middle phalanx bone here. And around about this section off the screen will be the distal interphalangeal joint. Now what's happening in here is the patient is flexing and extending their fingertip. And what we can see is we can see the flexor tendons here moving, and we can see that there is no gap or no problem between the flexor tendons and the bone here. Let's take a look at the appearance of a pathological A4 pulley. In this case, we will be looking at a rupture of the A4 pulley. On this image on the left-hand side of the screen, here we can see the proximal interphalangeal joint, we can see the bone of the middle phalanx, and we can see the distal interphalangeal joint. We can now see, compared to the still images previously, that we have lost that appearance of the flexor tendons as they go towards the bone, and the flexor tendons are now up here in a straight position, and this is the bottom of the flexor tendons here. As you can see, there is a gap between tendons and the bone, and this gap is 3.1 millimeters. In this image, there is no resistance on the finger, whereas the next image, we will see how the finger looks with resistance added. As you can see here, the distance between the tendon and the bone has now increased to 4.2 millimeters, and this is typically what we would see with a rupture of the A4 pulley. So to summarize, we have looked there at the normal ultrasound appearance of an A4 pulley and the pathological appearance of a ruptured A4 pulley.